Beyond the Badge is brought to you by Stefan Kadolin of Coldwell Banker Burnett Realty. and the Edina Crime Prevention Fund. Welcome to Beyond the Badge, a program about the inner workings of the Edina Police Department. Thanks for joining us. I'm Officer Brian Hubbard. With the snow and ice melted and street sweepers hard at work, more people are taking to the streets on bicycles. State law allows bicyclists to ride on all Minnesota roads, except where restricted. Yeah, this is the time of year bikers will start getting their bikes out of the garage, dust them off, and start bringing them on the roads. Um, you just got to be extra careful for the bikes that are on the roads because they're a lot smaller than, than the cars we've been used to seeing all winter long. The Edina Police Department, along with the Minnesota Department of Transportation and the State Bicycle Advisory Committee, remind all drivers to share the road and follow these additional safety tips. Bicyclists should ride on the road and must ride in the same direction as traffic. It's illegal to ride facing traffic. Motorists must maintain a three-foot clearance when passing a bicyclist. Bicyclists must obey the same traffic control signs and signals as motorists. Motorists and bicyclists must yield the right of way to each other. Bicyclists must signal their turns and should ride in a predictable manner. Bicyclists who ride at night must use lights and reflectors. Finally, bicyclists should always wear helmets. In this country, a car is stolen every 19 seconds every day of the year. That's according to the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. Bicycle and other vehicle thefts are also increasing. Most vehicles are stolen when their owners make it easy for the thief. This time of year, um, bike theft increases due to garage doors left open and bikes left unattended and unlocked. To protect your bicycle, use a case-hardened chain and a sturdy padlock. The chain should be at least 3 eighths of an inch thick and covered with plastic or an inner tube to prevent scratching the bike's finish. A cable is lighter and more convenient, but can be cut. Always chain both the rear wheel and the frame of your bike to a stationary object in a conspicuous place. If you simply chain one wheel to the other, it can be tossed in a truck and untangled later. Never leave a bicycle unattended, even for a short time. Bikes should be stored indoors or in locked garages when they aren't in use. Tell your children if they loan a bike to a stranger who asks to try it out, they might never see it again. Warmer temperatures and longer days also mean more pedestrians on city streets and sidewalks. The Edina Police Department reminds drivers to yield to pedestrians. Failing to stop at an intersection or marked crosswalk could land motorists 90 days in jail, a $1,000 fine, or both. High-speed chases are rare in Edina, but the police department has an arsenal of pursuit tactics to slow them down when necessary. Let's go out in the field where Officer Aaron White is with Police Sergeant Nate Mandel, who will demonstrate the department's stop sticks in this episode segment of How's It Work? Thanks, Brian. We're back for another segment of How's It Work? And today I'm joined by Edina Police Sergeant Nate Mendel. Nate, thanks for being on our show. Great to be here, Aaron. We've talked about different equipment and technology that uh, we use as police officers to do our job. Today it's not as much technology. This is a fairly basic concept we're going to talk about. And it's something we call stop sticks. People have probably heard about it, seen it on TV, that sort of thing. Can you fill us in a little bit? Tell us what stop sticks are. Sure, Aaron. Uh, stop sticks are tire deflation devices that we utilize uh, during pursuits um, just to try to end them a little, little more safely. They're stored in our trunks and they're easily accessible. It's a, a little Velcro strap that we undo. And these are in all of the squad cars? These are in every squad car that uh, the Edina Police Department uh, has. Okay. These, these are thrown across a lane of traffic and there are several uh, hollow spikes that are contained within each of these um, 
Tubes, basically. Tubes, they're, basically. They're very easily uh, deployable. The biggest thing, though, is for, for our own safety is we need to find a, a good place of cover. Um, there have been instances uh, in the past where officers have been actually hit by the suspect uh, sure. while deploying stop sticks. So. And it's apparent from your handling here that the spikes are contained, so you're able to safely handle these. Correct. And the uh, deflation device only uh, comes into play when a vehicle drives over these. That's correct. Okay. Um, maybe you can give us a demonstration as to how you deploy these. Sure, I'd love to. Let's uh, step over here where there's a little bit more space. Sounds good. We have a little more space here. Why don't you show us how to throw the stop sticks? Sure. Stop sticks have a, what's called a reel. You want to make sure you hold on to that reel, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. But they're very easily deployable. Uh, you first unlock the reel, then toss them past the lane of traffic that you're targeting. Okay. And the reason you want to do that is so you can straighten out the stop sticks across that lane of traffic. And then you'd want to find a good place of cover. And then you have the opportunity to remove the stop sticks. Correct. After the suspect is passed. Correct. So once the, once the bad guy hits the stop sticks, we have the ability with this string to yank them out of that lane of traffic so the officer's tires don't pop. Does that always work out? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't always work out, uh, but you just have to be real cognizant of what you're doing and careful. And communication is probably a communication big, uh, important, is huge. Important step officers need to know where you are. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for the demonstration. It looks no like again a powerful tool, one with maybe uh, a limited application, but uh, but very useful and. Uh, good uh, safety improvement when it can be used safely. Right. All right. Well, Nate, thank you for being on the show and demonstrating stop sticks today. Thanks, Aaron. Recently, four Edina officers were recognized for being tough on drunk drivers. In March, the Minnesota chapter of Mothers Against Drunk Driving, or MAD, held its statewide recognition event at Target Field. Edina police officers David Busalis, Nicole Pesek, Ryan Schultz, and I were nominated for MAD's Outstanding Service Award given to law enforcement officers who have gone above and beyond in education, prevention, and enforcement, and whose efforts are making an impact in reducing alcohol-related death and injury on Minnesota roads. Uh, it means a lot, and uh, obviously we do this job not to, be, uh, to get pats on the back, but it's nice to be appreciated for our work. Our department makes it a priority, and I know um, my, myself make it a priority to go out and arrest truck drivers. We have the opportunity to do it working weekend nights, and we go out and we make it a focus. Some departments, it's not as much of a focus, but here it is. While all nominees were honored, winners of MAD's Outstanding Service in Law Enforcement Awards were Deputy John Stoffel of the Washington County Sheriff's Department and Officer Darren Vossen of the Worthington Police Department. The Edina Eden Prairie Police Explorers Post was also recognized in March. Edina Eden Prairie Explorers Post 925 is open to young men and women ages 14 to 20 who have an interest in learning more about careers in law enforcement. The Explorers program educates young adults on the purposes, mission, and objectives of law enforcement. The program provides career orientation experiences, leadership opportunities, and community service activities. The goal of the program is to help young people choose career paths in law enforcement and to challenge them to become responsible citizens of their communities. You know, the Police Explorers teaches the kids a lot of different things. We as advisors teach them many different components of law enforcement, such as hostage negotiations, traffic stops, search and arrest. But we also teach them some life skills like communication, um, self-confidence, also some team building skills. For its work in Edina and Eden Prairie, the Post was recognized by the Northern Star Council with a National Exploring Excellence Award at its recent banquet. The Post meets Tuesday evenings at the South Metro Public Safety Training Center. For more information on the program, contact Officer Dick at 952-826-1610. Police officers put themselves in potential danger every time they respond to a call. A training program put on by the Hennepin County Medical Center earlier this year aimed to help area officers prepare for some of those dangers and give them the skills they need when responding to unexpected emergencies. Edina 16 reporter Steve Christensen has more. Edina police! Edina police! I'm in here at 100! Rescuing a wounded officer. Right over here, man. I think I got him down. 
was just one of the real-life emergency scenarios Edina and other area police officers experienced during a three-day training program last month known as TEMPO. Schultz, we need the ambulance. The um, TEMPO, which is Tactical Emergency Medical Peace Officer, um, was developed in coordination with uh, HCMC. It's a course that they offer, um, which uh, enhances the uh, police officer's ability to provide service to its citizens. Some of the training scenarios had officers working in the dark, raising their heart rates, as well as dip their hands in ice cold water. Oh, All the way in. Ah, okay. What we're trying to do is get them to do what we consider to be life-saving intervention skills um, automatically without the aid of having their all of their senses about them. Go ahead and open up your wounds and your upper left hand tell you're on right here. Right. So we're putting on tourniquets and doing things that we may have to do in the field of, if an officer gets shot and we're actually doing it under stress, which is uh, you know more realistic. Remember this is a pressure bandage, so you gotta try to get pressure on there. Training exercises included applying tourniquets, bandages, and packing gauze in a wound. Someone shot in the leg, you have to do all this stuff. Take a look at it. You know, what we have here is obviously just a piece of raw beef, uh, but what we've been able to do with this is create a model that actually bleeds, and what we want the officers to do is to be able to learn to pack a bleeding wound for hemorrhage control. Take a look. Right there, go Officers attending the training say they found the skills they were taught invaluable. It is designed more for what we do out there on the street and how we respond to medicals. I don't know where the shooter is at. Down, down. Police often enter situations not knowing what to expect. Those who attended the tempo training say they hope the skills they learn will help them handle nearly any emergency they encounter. For Edina 16, I'm Steve Christensen. Stop scenario! Sixteen officers from Edina took part in the special course. A select group of highly trained police officers and paramedics make up Edina's Special Weapons and Tactics, or SWAT team. Let's go back out in the field to Officer Aaron White, who is with Team Leader and Police Officer Mark Biermeyer and Fire Lieutenant Todd Porthan to learn more about the SWAT team. Thanks, Brian. Today we're in the Edina Police Department garage where we store our vehicles and various equipment. And our purpose is to learn a little bit about our SWAT team. And to do that, I'm joined by Mark Biermeyer and Todd Porthan, members of the SWAT team here at the Edina Police Department. Um, Todd, you're actually a member of the Edina Fire Department. Uh, tell me a little bit about your day job. Correct. I'm a full-time fire department uh, firefighter paramedic with Edina. Okay. And so your role with the SWAT team is, is, is that of a medic? Yes, tactical paramedic. Okay. And then Mark, how about your day job? What do you do? So I work patrol and then I've uh, been here for 12 years. Very good. And uh, so a police officer and a firefighter paramedic and, and uh, I had the combination of you guys here today to emphasize the fact that uh, the SWAT team is one of many partnerships kind of between our departments. Um, Mark, tell me, you know, give me the overview. What is it that a SWAT team does? Our SWAT team, we are responsible for the citizens of the city that we go to high risk calls. Um, not only do we do high risk, we'll, we'll help protect dignitaries that may come to the city through the city. Um, barricaded suspects, um, High-risk entries, warrants, arrests. So it's a specialty assignment, it, it really. Is. It's, it's when something extra is needed that you guys are kind of called into action. It is. It is. And we train for that. We have extra training that uh, prepares us for those calls. And uh, we use extra weapons that patrol isn't assigned to or used to sure. that we have. In your role, um, that is a tactical medic, um, what do you do for the team? It uh, seems like an odd partnership, but actually has pretty much a national standard. And um, our main focus is the health and wellness of the officers sure. and uh, the, not only just the citizens, everybody involved, but also the suspect. And, um, and, and, and it's medicine pretty much derived from military combat proven um, life-saving techniques. Sure, as Mark kind of pointed out, a lot of this has to do with high-risk situations, potentially uh, barricaded bad guys and that sort of thing. Um, there's some risk of uh, shots being fired or people being injured. Oh, sure, sure. It's a high-risk situation and 
but mainly much of what we do do is uh, comes way before that, sure. and that's uh, making sure that you know everybody's hydrated, and, uh, make sure that we have the, our equipment's ready to go. Sure. Um, As a medic, do you actually then participate in the um, the higher risk portions? Do you enter with the team if they go into a, a barricaded situation or a residence? We or are typically positioned in certain areas within the operation, sure. and that's to benefit um, either you know quick. Um, evacuation of an officer or a suspect that's down and be able to treat them. Sure, and that's just it um, for both of you guys is you have a lot of special training, some special equipment, but uh, Mark, a big part of this is, uh, is you know, safety for everyone involved. Uh, you're looking out for uh, everybody, the suspect, the, the potential victims or hostages. Correct, you know, the main thing at the end of the day is we all go home and that we've put the bad person away and the people that he was there trying to harm are safe and home with their families too. You guys actually work together um, with several agencies when these incidents happen. How does that work? Who do you work with? We're part of what's called the Southwest uh, SWAT Consortium, which is Eden Prairie, Edina, St. Louis Park, Hopkins, and Minnetonka. So the five cities combined to basically make one team. And at any time, we can have 60 officers together um, if, we, if needed for a call. We train with them every other month um, sure. so so if we go to a call we, we get intertwined with each other we know everybody we know how everybody works sure so it's a, a, a relatively small investment of, of, of individuals and time for uh, Edina PD um, but when you put it all together you guys have a pretty uh, powerful group of people and resources available it sounds like yes we do so final question for you guys today. Mark, uh, we've been doing this interview in front of this piece of equipment here. Tell me a little bit about this. This is our Bearcat that we acquired a number of years ago. Um, it is an armored personnel carrier. It's completely bulletproof. It can withstand a uh, high-powered rifle. It also has some radiation detections in there. This is a, a big piece of equipment that keeps all the officers safe. We can get close to a house, close to a subject, sure. without getting the officers out in the open. Okay, uh, so you have somebody uh, barricaded in a house, something like that, you can bring this right up. We've used door, it, we, we've driven through fences, um, through people's backyards, right up to the back door. And this is a somewhat unique piece of equipment that's really shared here in the metro, isn't it? It is, this, this vehicle has been called upon from numerous cities um, throughout the metro to come out and help them, whatever situation they had. Right, very good. Well, Todd, thank you for being here, and thank Mark you. as well. Todd thank Porthan you. and Mark Biermeyer, members of the United SWAT team, thank you guys for your time today. And we'll return to Brian in the studio. Thanks, Aaron. Summer is on the minds of most, but it wasn't that long ago that the land of 10,000 lakes was frozen. The annual polar bear plunge presented by Minnesota law enforcement took place between January and March. A series of 14 plunges were held across the state as a fundraiser for Special Olympics Minnesota. A handful of Edina Police Department personnel participated in the Eden Prairie event, jumping into the icy waters at Round Lake Park on March 12th. Uh, it's cold, but we're happy to do this for a great cause. It's for the kids. This is our fifth or sixth year, we forget, but uh, it's a great time and we're, we're doing it for Special Olympics. Really? The Edina Public Safety Team, dubbed the Spider Pigs, raised nearly $4,000 for Special Olympics Minnesota. The team included Tony Martin, Adam LaRue, Tanya Hagee, Brian Tholen, Tom McKenzie, Mike Seeger, Kim Tubbs, and me. We were the third highest team fundraiser and the top law enforcement fundraiser in the event. Our efforts will help aid 6,000 athletes of Special Olympics Minnesota. In June, the police department will participate in the annual torch run through Edina before the start of the summer games. On behalf of my co-host, Officer Aaron White, and the rest of the officers of the Edina Police Department, thanks for tuning in to learn a little bit more of what happens beyond the badge. Stay safe this spring. Beyond the Badge is brought to you by Stefan Kadolin of Caldwell Banker Burnett Realty 
and the Edina Crime Prevention Fund.